Alright, what's up guys, Dirty Fargo here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a Silverfish XP farm tutorial. And I just came up with this design the other day, so I thought I'd show it off. And yeah, it's basically roughly based on Exumavoid's Cave Spider XP farm design though, so i got to give credit where credit's due, and his link will be in the description. So yeah, so a lot of the wiring's the same, but flipped, and yeah, you'll see, if you knew Exumavoid's design, you'll see how it's a little bit similar in some ways. But, yeah, we've got quite a few of them gathered up here now. we got 180 almost. Um, yeah, I was AFK for a little bit just to give you guys a good show. But all I have to do now is flick this lever here, and this will get them all down to a one-shot kill. So as I flick this lever, you will see two pistons extend, one to block any more from getting into this pile and the other one to crush them so here we go so the one up there and then there's one down here crushing them and then the one that's crushing them retracts just in time to make sure that they're all a one shot kill I'll just go in game mode zero here for you and you can see I'm at basically zero XP so let's see how high we can how high we can rank up here with 180 of them so yeah so they're all one shot kill as you can see but I'm just gonna do this because it's a lot easier Alright, so how much XP did we get from that? Alright, so 28 levels, not too bad, and you'll see that this piston is still extended and it's blocking these ones from getting in, because we don't want the ones that aren't a one punch kill to get mixed in with the ones that are, so that's why we do that. And so you just flick this lever back, and then they all can drop in here, and then more will start to gather. And you can see the spawners right there, so we're really close. And notice that I used no stone, no cobble, and no stone brick. Um, that is going to be very important for this. So, as you can see, there's already 10 of them again, and more will keep spawning from the spawner. I guess that that's it for the demo, and let's go start to build it. Alright guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do if you're making one of these Silverfish XP farms is find a stronghold because strongholds that have end portals are what have Silverfish monster spawners. That's the only place you can find them in legit gameplay. So yeah, so to find those you need Eye of Ender and to make Eye of Ender you need Blaze Powder and Ender Pearls. So figure out how to get those items and you're good. And then you can get some Ender Eyes and... Yeah, so when you throw an ender eye in the air, it'll it'll always go towards where the ender por end portal is. All right, so when you throw an eye, eye of ender in the air, it'll always go towards where the end portal is. And when you get close to it, it'll actually start to go downwards towards it. So like that. As you see, they start to go downwards, and I've already made a little hole to get into mine, but yeah. So if you go right down from where they're going down, you should be able to find an end portal just like this with a silverfish spawner. Alright, so when I made this tutorial, I was under the impression that you could break these in survival mode, these end portal frame blocks. So I took it out in my video, but you can actually leave it in because um, I realized after that you can't actually break these in survival. I had never tried it in survival, I was just building it in creative um, just to come up with a good design. And so, yeah, you can't actually break these in survival, so you can keep them in. So I've left the entire, you can see I've left the entire portal in. Just make sure that we have blocks above each end portal frame block, just like I have here. Just so that they can't spawn in this location. Because normally they could spawn, like, right on, on top of this. And then they might not go into our water stream that we want. So make sure there's blocks on top of it and everything will work exactly the same. You can leave the end portal frame in and it's fi it works fine. I didn't in my tutorial because when I made it, I thought you could break it in survival mode. So yeah, that's it. Back to the tutorial. Maybe clear some space like I am doing all around it just so we can get started. And oh yeah, before you do anything actually, I'm in peaceful just for the sake of... Oh, I'm not actually in peaceful, but I'm going to be in peaceful just for the sake of the tutorial. But the first thing you're going to want to do is light up this area. And when I say light up, I mean really light up. I'm talking like every space. Put a torch. The reason I say put a torch in every space is because silverfish like blaze can spawn in level, a light level of 11 or lower, which is fairly high. So you actually need to have it really, really well lit up in order to stop the spawning. So 
for for these and blaze are the only two that you need to really 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 light it up so I'm not gonna keep doing that because I'm gonna be in peaceful but that's what you should do you should make sure you have it really lit up while you're clearing the space and also I would get rid of the lava just to make things a little bit safer and I would also be really armored up for this um, because you're gonna breaking these blocks I'm not getting any because I'm on peaceful but breaking these blocks you're gonna get a lot of silverfish that are inside these blocks attacking you so you're gonna wanna have maybe some flint and steel and some good armor because when you hit the silverfish with a sword it actually call, calls more silverfish to come out of the blocks to attack you so you want to actually hit them with something like flint and steel so or some lava or something like that you know so now you can choose what blocks you're going to use and there are a few blocks that you cannot use for this because silverfish will enter certain blocks and these blocks are cobblestone stone stone bricks mossy stone bricks and cracked stone bricks. These are the only ones I believe as far as I know because I've been using moss stone and this does work. So this, they do not enter moss stone but they enter basically every other kind of stone so I am going to use sandstone and moss stone for my choice and I'm also going to use ice for part of it. First thing we can do is decide where our floor is going to be so we want one block of airspace and then the floor so we can put our floor right here just one block of airspace below and we are gonna do the actually the same with the ceiling so one block and then the ceiling so this is gonna represent where our ceiling is gonna be and this is representing where our floor is gonna be now we can pull up our F3 screen and look at our F value on the left hand side below the Z value so we have F value of 2 and an F value of 1 and in these two directions, so F1 and F2, we're going to place four blocks on the side of the spawner here. So one, two, three, four. And then after that fourth block is where our wall is going to be. So this wall is already in the perfect spot for our, for our wall, for our spawning room. So we're going to be replacing it all with sandstone. So I'm just marking it off that this is where our wall is going to be. So our floor is going to go all the way out to that wall. So the same in the direction 2 as the direction 1 you're gonna wanna go four blocks out so one two three four and then that is where our wall is gonna be so you can just mark it off just like that and of course delete these blocks because they're just they're just to mark it off properly you can actually leave the block above the silverfish spawner filled in like this because we don't actually want the silverfish to be able to spawn right on top of the the spawner now we can look in the directions 3 and F0, F, so F0 and F3. So in these two directions, we're going to go 1, 2, 3 blocks away instead of 4. And then that's where our wall is going to be. So before we went 4 blocks away and then our wall, in the directions F3 and F0, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, and then the wall. And then you can just fill your walls in once you've got that down fill your walls and your ceilings in and I will be back to you once I've done that alright so when you're done you should have a room that looks exactly like this except for maybe a little bit more lit up and yeah so pull up your F3 screen again and we're gonna continue on here and look at your F2 wall and go over to it and then just knock out all the bottom blocks here and the ones below them we're just gonna make a little trench and just one block of space away you're just gonna fill in the blocks just all the way along there just like that too high and then on the same row as where the monster spawner is so right here we're gonna go straight forward and we're gonna knock out these two blocks actually just the bottom one just like that and we're also gonna replace this all with sandstone just because we always have to do this we don't want the silverfish to get into any of these blocks so now that we've done that we want to look at our F3 wall so our F3 wall but in the trench so we want to take out these two blocks and we're just going to extend this little trench by one on this side so we're just bringing it out one more block so on this side it's flush with the wall but on here it's just out one more block 
and this is just to even out the water flows so that when I put one bucket here, one bucket here, it meets perfectly in the center and the water flows perfectly out that way. So when we're done, the, fi the final step of doing this is going to be placing water on this back wall. And so the water on this back wall will push all the silverfish into this trench here. You can also put a block right over here. So now what you're going to want to do is get on the other side of this trench here. So just break the blocks, replace them. Um, and you're going to want to extend this trench here until the water stops. So there you go. Already done. It's already to where it stops. And then you're going to want to put a lid over it just like that. And then you're just going to want to clear a bunch of space back here because you're going to need some. So I'm just going to go do that. Alright, so I forgot to mention that in this path, you're going to also want to make sure to remove these two blocks and replace them with sandstone. So none of this is stone as usual. And then I've cleared up some space here. You're going to want to clear it a little bit lower as well and bring the floor down as I have done. I've actually brought it down one, two, and a half levels. So we're standing on half slabs. I believe this is the best level to have it to be standing at. So yeah, after you do that, you're going to want to place one block right here. So the silverfish are going to drop down one block right there. And then you're just going to wall it up. So just like that. And then we're going to want to have an area to punch them through. So we're going to put a sandstone stab there and right beside it. And then they will should be falling right down to here. All right, so I forgot to mention that I actually use ice on the ground here instead of sandstone like I did in my example. So I just think just in case it makes them go a little faster, I like to put some ice there. And I also like to use it on this floor as well. Um, just to just to help the silverfish go a little bit faster for you um, but that's optional you don't need to do that that's just if you want to make it go a little bit faster but I'm not even sure if it does actually make it go faster so uh, I, I just have all of these replaced with ice as you can see like that and that way I like it because then you can see the spawner I really like that I really like to be able to see the spawner from where I'm standing I think that's a cool feature once you've got that half slab there, you can put a block over top of it, and this is just to case them in. So they have to fall down here, and basically now it is working. So if you deleted all your torches and, you know, place some water on that back wall, pushing them into this stream, then they would all gather right to there. So the only thing we have to do now is implement the mechanism to get them down to a one-shot kill using pistons, so just the crusher. So what you're going to want to do is just delete these blocks for now and you're going to want to place a, two sticky pistons just like that facing towards the stream just one block away from the stream on either side you could do it on either side it doesn't matter whichever side you prefer and then replace your blocks just like that you can even replace your sandstone slab and your block like that and now we're going to start the wiring so the first thing you're going to want to do is place one block on the back of the bottom piston and then a second block and then delete that first block then you're going to want to grab a redstone torch, place it on that block, and that's going to power just this bottom piston. So yeah, I'm wiring this a certain way, by the way, because of certain piston glitches. So if you're ask, wondering, hmm, why did he wire it that way? It's probably because I had to because of piston glitches. So I'm just going to clear some more area out here and so we can get this wiring going. So the next thing you're going to want to do is grab some repeaters. And coming from the direction of the monster spawner, you want to place a repeater going into this block, then grab some redstone dust, place some redstone dust, and around the corner, just like this, you want to place another repeater going like that. So then, to the side of this second repeater we just placed, we want to place some redstone, and a repeater taking it outwards like that. And then to the left of this redstone block, we want to place another block just like that. And then diagonally to the left of that block, we want to place another block, with a redstone torch powering this redstone corner here. So when you do that, this, this redstone torch should depower and your piston should depower like so. Then what we're going to do is raise the roof. <laughs> so we have some more room and basically we're going to extend the repeaters out from this block right here. So coming out from this block with the torch on it, Going into this repeater, we're going to place one, two repeaters, 
and then two repeaters going back into this corner block and then counting this repeater that's already placed one two three and then two backwards into this block right here so it's just a little circuit right here and then you can redstone to attach the ends of them just like that and you're gonna wanna have them all on full delay after you do that you can test it out if you want um, this is only the wiring for the bottom piston so nothing will work for the top piston but you can test it out if you want and you can do this by just placing a lever on this block right here with this redstone torch on it and if you do it you sh you should hear the piston power but then be depowered when this finishes just like that and so it's working now we just need to pow worry about this top piston and which is really easy actually because we just need to straight power it that's all we need to do there's no complicatedness to this one so I'm going to do the wiring a little bit weird here just because this is how it needs to be so there's no piston glitches or the only way I've found to do it. So coming straight from this block right here, we want to go have some wiring go straight out and up backwards just like that. And actually we're going to go up one more even just like that. And we're going to bridge it across just over all the wiring and maybe over to the side here just so we don't interfere we don't want to cause any piston glitches so we're trying to do this as as away from the other wiring as possible so and then we just once we bridge it over we just bring it around and straight into this piston right here like that but we can't use a redstone wiring actually on the end for some reason it causes a piston glitch so we got to use this repeater right here for some reason that fixes it and then you can carry the wiring from here to wherever you want your lever to be. So your, your area is going to be right here. So I would suggest somewhere along the lines of here-ish, you know, somewhere along those lines. And now it should be fully functioning. You might need a repeater depending on how long your wiring is here. But let's see if it's fully functioning. So no, it is not. So we're going to need a repeater and we're going to place it right here. So right on the corner of this one is where we'll place the repeater. And this is just going to extend the signal to be able to reach this one. So now, now it is definitely fully functioning. And you are basically done. So we can just test it out here once the signal resets. So this one should pull, go until this is over. Good. And this one stays powered. Perfect. All right. So we are done. Except for all we need to do is turn our lights off and put this water on the back wall. So I would actually put the water on the back wall, then turn the lights off. But that is all you need to do, and then we are done. So let's close this back up. It's dark in there now. I'm still on peaceful, so we're gonna have to take that off, but go to hard, game mode zero, and let's see if it's working. So let's get some silverfish spawn in here. All right, so we got some silverfish in here. Now let's test to see if it works. I'm really worried because what you should do first before testing it, I suggest, is remove all stone that's in your killing room. You don't want to have any stone in your killing room because when you go to punch them, that actually calls more silverfish to come attack you, like I was saying previously. So you don't actually want to have any stone available in the room, so you don't want any silverfish to sneak up on you. So I feel like when I do this, I'm going to get attacked. So I, if I were you, I would remove all of the sandstone here. But here we go. Let's test it out here. And go. Perfect. So now there should be a one-shot kill. One shot. One shot. One shot. One shot. Perfect. And see, as you can see, they are blocked off until you flick this lever back. And now the next batch can get in for the ready for the killing. So that is it, guys. That is the whole thing. And after that, it's just about making it look nice. As you can see, I made this other one look kind of nice. Um, but it's all about just making it look nice after that. And just make sure, like I did, that you have no stone in the room when you're when you're killing them. So yeah, guys, that's it for me. Let me know if you enjoyed, and peace.